What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Marcus Summers, Major Linux. I'm joined by Kev. I'm joined by Sin. And it is Thursday, which, you know, it's time for some more of that tech talk with you here on the cookout. Twitch.tv slash the cookout. How are y'all doing? Thank you for, um, oh, great. Now my TV's on. So, because, you know, I've been watching the cookout all day today. It was on the cookout all day today. Been been busy doing some things. Thank you, Telia, for kind of covering while we were changing a whole bunch of things in the back end. Um, apparently, my son is ready. We're ready. It's time to talk about some tech. Uh, so let's, let's go. To first off, I love I love Verizon. I do. Verizon's great. All right. And they're still doing things. They're still extending. They're waiving their fees. They're um, waiving their shuttle um, service shutoffs until june 30th right now um so as we talked about last week they were adding 15 gigabytes of uh was it mobile hotspot to users now that they're they're extending out um you know service cutoff times uh for those who may not be able to pay their bills because there are even more people who are losing their jobs due to this pandemic and verizon has continued on with their pledge to make sure that people are still able to connect to the internet and still able to reach family, friends, and uh, for students to do, still be able to do the schoolwork, uh, even though people may not be able to pay those very, very, very lofty cell phone bills. And I can tell you they are lofty. I just paid mine today $300 for two people. It's crazy. But yeah. So, um, hmm thoughts on this are interesting mm-hmm. for me um in particular i think there needs to be we we should be at the point now that we can comfortably talk about i think this is going to last a little bit longer than we thought oh most and definitely we're going to have to see articles like this probably until like the end of the year and that is being real conservative because it was like today that a a couple of friends of mine said hey um do y'all still want to go on that vacation that we were planning at the end of june or no and businesses are trying to reopen and we're trying so hard to go back to normal and every time someone does it's like Hey, look, there's a spike in cases. So I guess this city is not doing anything for a while or what have you. And it's like a, we're going to actually have to reframe the way life works. I expect to see like another three articles like this, where it's kind of like, we have extended this for 30 more days in anticipation of the continuance of COVID-19 because they're just kind of like, well, this put this extend this a little bit and see what happens extend this a little bit and see what happens like forever right yeah i mean yeah but it's it's nice to see that again verizon at least it there are some companies that do understand what's happening i mean it, it would be nice if it extended out further and further but i guess everybody's just trying to play it by ear they don't want to sit there and commit to that all of a sudden things just change and then Oh no, we're ass out of money because we said it's going to last until 2021 and everybody's outside, you know, licking each other's eyeballs now because we, we, we solved the crisis. But, um, now I wonder where these other companies are at that are supposed to be following suit there. And I say supposed to, because yes, we expect you, the people with all the technology and stuff to be making this stuff work because like. Y'all know we need this to function, period. So exactly, exactly. AT and T, where you at? Sprint, where you at? Stand up. Yeah. So I'm. Yeah. Verizon, good job. You're doing it. Uh, but to be fair, to be fair, AT and T is doing some things. I know they're providing three. Um. So this is what I'm getting from uh, the John Krasinski's new YouTube channel. Some good news. Um, apparently AT&T announced that they are paying three months of cell service for 
first responders, hotel, uh, not hospital workers, all that. Um, so they're doing something, maybe not this partic in particular. And also this is one of the articles that have been written that I pulled. So there could be more that they're doing. I just pulled this one. Um, so yeah. Um, also, so yes, T um, not, I'm sorry, not Telia. It's not Telia. It's, it's the cookout. Not Telia. Definitely not Telia. Who's behind the cookout account right now. Uh, the cookout pointed out that we do have closed caption. We had it for the previous year. We have it for this one. And I do want to address the cookout that yes, this will be available in the VODs as well. And even if you download this video, you will be able to see the subtitles and programs like VLC. So yes, we are making the channel that much more accessible for people. Again, I feel like that's a little bit of technology news. Um, people can now read the, the terrible things we say about these companies as we drag them during these unprecedented times. And we will drag them. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you can read it. It's great. All right. Uh, for those who would like to have, you know, more options other than Zoom or Discord or Skype or whatever for your digital conference, your virtual conferencing needs. Google Meet is now officially free for everyone starting sometime next month. Uh, right now, they are slowly rolling it out for users. Um, last time I checked, I only have access to join meets, but not create them. Um, actually, you know, we can try to slide. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to meet.google.com. Uh, okay. Yeah. So as you can see here, it says soon Google meet will be available for free, but right now I don't have access to that. Um, it will be rolling out to people slowly throughout the month of May. Uh, I think right now they're do like, as they're rolling it out, it's going to be like the unlimited, you know, the corporate plan. But as things kind of go back to a new normal, they're going to start rolling it back to where you can't have as many features. But at least for right now, when you do get access to Google Meet, uh, which used to be Hangouts Meet, which is the business version of Hangouts before they killed both of those Hangouts no longer exist anymore because Google likes killing things. Um, you now have you will now you will soon have the option to use Google meet on top of zoom on top of Skype on top of discord on top of it's, it's something else out there. It's gotta be other video chat applications out there, right? So did they finally get bored with like Google hangouts and decide to upgrade it or something? Oh yeah. They've been, they've been bored with that. Yeah. I love hangouts, but yeah, it just, Damn. Mm. They won't have it. Mm -mm. Like Hangouts on Air was great. That was the best tool for podcasters who wanted to stream their content, who wanted to put their content on YouTube. But they were like, nah, we, we good with this. We don't want this anymore. And they just kind of booted it mm. along with everything else. Mm. Indeed. Yeah. Of course, now we have... We're joined by the Microsoft representative um, Anka in the chat. Of course, she is not a fan of Google uh, services. Again, she would like to see you on Microsoft Teams. So, oh yeah, Microsoft Teams. That's definitely a service you could use for chat conversations if, if that's the route you want to go and use Microsoft. I don't know who would do that, but yeah. Um, next up, Google's Project Zero has, disco um, has discovered a number of zero-click vulnerabilities that affect all iPhones and Apple hardware. Um, does anybody find this? Ha does anybody find this suspicious? Anybody? No. no. Not that Project Zero because they do that for every company. Like it's just a team within Google that goes and finds vulnerabilities for anything. Okay. Yeah, I I don't find that suspicious. Or wait, are you saying that because Google found it, or the fact that there were just vulnerabilities found, and what was found? Sin. Yo. 
I was asking, like, what did you find suspicious, whether Google found it or the vulnerabilities themselves? No, I'm just kind of like uh, that Google found it. I'm just like, uh, Google, Google, why? Why, though? Yeah, I, yeah. So, yeah, Google has the same. It's called Project Zero. What they do is they find vulnerabilities anywhere. Um. So, yeah, like they've been doing this for a while. So, yeah, I don't necessarily find it suspicious. I think the fact that it's coming from 9 to 5 Google, it's almost like, ha, 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 Google found your flaws, ha, 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 ha. Like, no, it, it, it's not as bad as, I, I don't think there's any malicious intent there. I'm pretty sure they're finding way more in Android, but nobody's writing about that. Mm-mm. It's like, yeah. I don't know if I would say it was, I don't think I would ever say it's malicious, but it's one of those things, like, if it were me, just be out here like, hmm, security vulnerabilities, couldn't be me, can't relate, you hate to see it, you really do. (laughs) Nah, yeah, I don't think it's that, I, I honestly don't think it's that, though. But um, this actually goes so. So these issues have been resolved, but you would definitely need to update your iPhone. So yeah, go do that. If you have not done that, please do that. Um, several of these were fixed in January. I think one was fixed. Yeah. So um, the image IO issues were fixed in January and April 2020, while the Open EXR vulnerabilities have been fixed with the latest update 2.41. So. All of them have been fixed. If you have not updated your software, please do so. Because now that it's been disclosed, all these hackers are coming for you. You've been warned. Always up, always update. Oh, yeah. Speaking of updates, the iOS 13.5 beta makes it easier to skip face ID if you're wearing a mask. Oh, yeah. Um, of course, nowadays, because we are living in times where we are going outside, we're having to wear masks. Um, and, you know, still want to tweet. We still want to answer those text messages. Um, it makes it a little bit easy. It makes it a little bit difficult if you have a phone with Face ID to use it, you know, when wearing a mask. I actually tried to use it a while ago and it did not work out too well. But now, essentially, what it does is um, it doesn't waste much time. In getting you to a key code to, um, to put into your phone when you're wearing a mask. So, like, it'll detect that you're wearing a mask. It's like, you know what? We're just not even going to wait the two minutes it takes for it to realize it can't scan your face. And it'll take you right to a key code. Um, I actually updated the 13. Already, like, huh? What did they have before this, though? Wasn't there, like, a button that just lets you skip to that step or something? If not you automa- to Not automatically. Actually, I'm, let me see. I'm going to see if I can cover my face. Okay. Yeah, it kind of it kind of worked. I don't know. Like, I don't use a key code. I use, like, a keyboard. So, it was going to be really hard for me to demonstrate that to begin with. But, so, let's see. Yeah, let's take a look here. Oh, my God. Why do you do that every time? Okay, actually, no. Yeah, my phone did totally do that. Yeah. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah, so normally before when you swiped it open, it would actually do like the little thing to try to detect your face and it would sit there for a while. But yeah, as this video is kind of demonstrating, when you flip it up and it can't see your face, it just instantly goes to, hey, do you want to put in your passcode? So, um, yeah. If you have um, iPhone 10, 10S, 10R, 11, 11 Pro, Pro Max, ten, uh, Elemental G, I guess. Um, yeah, you can go out in your urban explorations in the midst of this pandemic and not have to worry about waiting for the passcode to pop up for you to put in. Um, look at the D- Denny, the CC picks up everyone. That's really cool, but that's an OBS. We t- okay, so. Still talking about the CC stuff, not 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 the cool tech things we're talking about, but no, we're talking about. Caption. I mean, we have to talk about these captions. The captions are important. Oh, they are. I, I would like to see what they look like. I guess I'll check the vods later. Um, but apparently, everybody likes them, so 
Yeah. If you're listening to the po- the audio podcast version of this, you should definitely check out the streams or check out the VODs. Go back and watch the VODs and see the captions. They're there. It'll show exactly. up in the VODs for you. Watch the VODs, everyone. Yeah. Then, all right, so that's it for text. That, wow, the, actually, the text session was really, really quick. Just snuck up on me. <laughs> snuck up on me. But um, and more security news in the gaming front. Please, we urged you to do this yesterday. I will urge you to do it now. And there's a story in the future today in which I will urge you to do it again. If you do not have two-factor authentication set up on your account, for the love of God, do it now. Yes. If you love your Animal Crossing. This is going to be our classic case of, didn't we tell y'all last week? (laughs) Didn't we tell y'all last week? Didn't we tell you last week? Last, I mean, go and watch the podcast if you don't believe me. We told y'all last week to enable this two-factor stuff. We told you right. the week before to no, do this um, two-factor stuff. We told you on the forums to do this two-factor stuff. Do the two-factor stuff. We're not playing with you. Not do it. Not do. Not playing. Not playing. He's, he's, Apparently, a hundred and sixty thousand Nintendo accounts have been accessed in a huge privacy breach. It's coming from Eurogamer. Just how? I mean, I get how. Uh, also, right. another thing, outside of two-factor auth, do mm-hmm. not use the same password for every fucking account. Mm-hmm. Randomize. We told like, we the, told we told them my key pass. We told them my le- we told them my we told them my two-factor. We told them my password managers. We told I mean, we told them. We Y'all, these people really aren't playing, and it's not even just a Nintendo thing. I was watching a stream today where someone had their phone in front of them, and their passcode popped up because someone was trying to hack their like gaming account from Blizzard or whatever it right. was. Like these people aren't playing. This isn't just a Nintendo thing. This isn't everybody everywhere is over here boarding hacking people because y'all on quarantine and trying to save up for these turnips. Please <laughs> enable your two-factor <laughs> authentication, okay? Okay, thank you. It is, and it's not even they're hacking. I had to explain this to somebody over the weekend because um, they had their Domino's account um, with an unauthorized access, and they ordered pizza for carryout in Illinois. Um, I had to explain to them. Said, "No, you weren't hacked. You probably used your same password for everything. Something else got leaked." And they decided they wanted to go test accounts. They were like, okay. Sure. So, yeah. The, the moral of the story is, you know, y'all need to wise up here. Cha- use different passwords to different accounts. Use two-fact authentication. And just be careful where you're putting your thing. Just, just, just be careful where you put stuff. Because, yeah, now people are just bored. And you got nothing to do. And all they want is some free pizza. It's amazing what people will do for pizza now. Maybe we can send Denny on an investigation to this Illinois um, Domino's. We can stop him. I'd like to see, I'd like to see that documentary on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said she called. Um, so she said she had called that Domino. She ordered it online, so I don't know why she called the Domino's. She was like, she called them and said, "Yo, so can I get my money back?" It's like. Yeah, we can't do that. Also, we've had so many people who've called this domino said this has happened to them. Yeah, it's about time somebody called the cops. Um, I believe so. Denny, I'm going to put that on you. You're the closest one to the scene. So if you can handle that for us, that will be great. <laughs> Appreciate it. Then you say, they say my Parmesan bikes were lacking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I wasn't drinking when that happened. Oh, man. (sighs) In more COVID-19 related news, there is a Minecraft map that's out that is attempting to simulate social distancing during a pandemic. Um, So I watched this video. I'm going to see if I can play it here. It doesn't really simulate social distancing as much as it shows what happens when too many people are close together which is the opposite of that but okay um essentially you got 
like these little bots, I guess that are humans. One becomes infected and then you just watch as these people become sick and then turn into zombies. And you know, you can either watch from a distance or you can become this little nurse character and you can try to treat um, these zombified humans. So yeah, if you want to have a nice little history, a nice little lesson for people who want, who need to learn about social distancing and why it's important to stay the fuck in your house. So in the event that you are certain types of people who would like to simulate these experiences that they really did not have to have because they could have just stayed inside, by all means, feel free to do this and then stretch yourself out. That being said, also consider for free, you can just turn on the news. Also, stay in the house and wash your hands. I mean, it's that simple. Granted, I did run into somebody to, um, over the week who still, after having family members catch and then unfortunately, you know, pass away to the virus, they were like, nope, I'm still going to go outside. I'm still going to live my life. Like, bro, excuse me, sir. I, I'm just saying, like, you firsthand experience, but no, no. All right. That's fine. Yeah. Stay, that's that's fine. Go live your life. You do that. Stay your ass over there. Yeah. That's I'm glad I, you do not live near me. It's okay. Don't call me. Don't write me. Mm -mm. Stay your ass over there. I'm like, Danielle, I, 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 I won't hear nothing from you to the, to, the, to the curb is flat. Just stay your ass over there. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> but yeah, we have to create. Think, I have to keep. We have to create thing after thing after thing after thing to kind of prove this thing. It is like, I don't know. I mean, some, uh, some people just don't want to be taught. the thing that I would like to understand. These games and tutorials are not for children, right? You're out here with a whole tutorial in 2020 on how to wash your hands and stay away from people. For people who have the ability to have firearms, to drive cars, to vote on the president, like... If we haven't gotten it by now, we're just not going to. We're going to have to let people just get the consequences of their actions. But see, like... Because if death don't scare you, death, death see, don't scare you? That's the thing death. I'm on. Like, I agree with you on that. It's just that, that idiocy and stupidity could spill out on the people who are doing the right thing. And that's the one thing was like, I, I could like we could be like all right no like Darwinism will handle it, but right. at the same time it could take out people who are definitely just trying to do the right thing. So who just got who just who just have the who just have the cost and thing of having bad parents that don't that aren't social distancing or just loved ones who are not caught up in the whole like reopen the the the, the economy and then they get caught up in it because you know they just happen to be like well. I just want to be out today. The sad thing is, you know. like, I hear that they like they want to reopen the economy, but the thing is, like, the economy never dot never got closed. Like, I'm still paying bills. Had to pay a whole bunch of them today. Um, mm -hmm. groceries. Mm -hmm. Like, stuff still ain't free for me. So the economy no. ain't closed down. It's still alive and kicking. I wish mm -hmm. somebody would tell me that the economy was closed so I could stop paying these bills. Mm. Just enjoy my life, but you know, mm. that's, that's not the case right now. It's powers to be that want more. Yeah, I always said that. If you need it more, reason to stay at home. I have bought good news oh, yeah. from upon Mount PlayStation. We oh, now have. Updates. We have new release dates for The Last of Us Part 2 and The Ghost of Tsushima. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I really do. Yeah, Tsushima. So for those who are wondering, Herman Holst, head of Worldwide Studios of SIE, has shared the good word with you all that The Last of Us Part 2 will be coming on June 19th. June 10th. And Ghost of Tsushima will be here on July 17th, a month later. For if, if you needed a reason to stay home. 
and play some amazing video games. Like I will not play The Last of Us Part Two because I don't need more of a reminder of failures of things and how bad things can get. Yeah, an emotional. What crippling. are we thinking Ghost of Tsushima is going to be like? Because I haven't heard of that at all. And The Last of Us, I'm only vaguely familiar with. Oh, the Ghost of Tsushima. Oh my. Ooh, man. I just. I, I actually I don't know. I, I've been watching it. Like it's just a samurai game. Just yeah. go around, just cut people. Mm-hmm. And then in a world just full of shooters and shooters and shooters. Uh, and in a world where I wish I can get Bushido Blade remade. That's a, I'm kind of yeah. here for um, Ghost yeah. of Tsushima. So I heard some details on that leak uh, that are pretty dang spicy, Denny. Pretty spicy. Do Luckily, we want to do we want to go into that, gents? I have I not think. heard anything. I am of the I'm like I don't care, but I know people who do care. And I'm all yeah. I'm like, look, even tangentially, if I don't know, then I'm helping the people who do care not hear anything. Right. Exactly. So I'm like being that buffer. If I don't know anything, I can't say anything. Same. That's that's me too. Even though I'm not gonna play it and I'm gonna be watching a lot of people who are gonna yeah. play it. That's how I consumed the first last of us like i watched uh somebody play it but i know people really truly have a deep deep love and respect for this game so i can't myself can't speak speak to any of the the leaks and the small leaks and the tangential leaks even if there was like there's a girl in it i don't even want to talk about that <laughs> because i don't want that what? To, be a spo- to be a possible spoiler even if there is like people in this game until like i see the game play and see it then i can be like okay you, you mean to tell me there are humans in this video game oh my god this yeah because oh, i can't even bro i don't even want to i don't even want to speak on that on anything because i don't want to like throw you know thing to things yeah so i just don't yeah i try not to i want to talk too much about it but now uh, this so, one now this one here, rumor saying Naughty Dog was planning on pushing Last of Us Two to the holidays and refused to give the workers an advance on their bonus during COVID. Take it with a grain of salt, but after the reports of crunch, it's not too far fetched. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Um, I mean, especially after hearing what was going on with Gearbox and allegedly was it Borderlands Three didn't meet expectations or it didn't sell as well because they had to take out another loan. So all the money was there. So all the people who were hoping for bonuses, you know, to pay for bills and, you know, buy houses and things that, you know, that kind of live didn't get their bonuses. Yeah. That, and, and, and then on top of that, Randy Pitchford telling people that if they didn't like the fact that they weren't getting the money that was promised to them, they can fucking quit. Yeah. Randy Pitchford could really just eat a big old bag of dicks, if, if you ask me, but Ho- hopefully Neil Druckmann isn't that bad or whoever is running Naughty Dog. Yeah, I hope not. Um, employees were told they would get a bonus six months after the game's release, but it's been moved like three times now, and now they got no income. Ooh, that's... Yeah, you know there are there's something to be said about because that wasn't the spice I thought it was. It's a completely like things I've heard in gaming news are in a completely different area. But all I'm gonna say is, y'all are only gonna have so long before these people start showing up to the office. If you have them showing up to the office, and you better not with like a whole baseball bat and being like, okay, so let's talk about these paychecks because y'all aren't about to get away with this. I mean, but again, this is why these use these uh, uh words. This is why these unions exist. They're starting to come up. Uh, let's say Gang Workers Unite is the biggest one by far. Um, I definitely support that any developer, anybody who's working on these games, get a part of these unions because of the fact that, again, as I've told people before this year, like after this pandemic, this is when we start rewriting the new normal. Not just rewriting history, rewriting the new normal. And if more people aren't getting on board to do that, to change these practices, 
given so many things that have been just brought to light. Like this pandemic just like kind of just shook everything and just let all the terrible things in just capitalism, government, all of that just kind of fall to the floor where we can just see it lay bare. If people aren't here to or that are willing to work to get these changes made, then when the new normal gets set, you 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 can't complain if shit still ain't working for you. You gotta put in that work. You need to put in that work first. So like I hope that a lot of these um developers during all this, when all this stuff is um said and done, that they've got the changes in place, that they're making these um changes within their companies. Um, I also want to add here that on the consumer side of things, I hope we do one start demanding better from how companies treat their employees mm -hmm. and two stop spending money with people who are terrible to their people where we can. I understand that it's like it's almost impossible, but the way that America is set up in general and right. stuff to be completely ethical about things. But man, if we can get people to be even a little bit better and we can use our wallet to do it, then please, please and thank you. Right. That's see. it. Send tweet. Yeah. Cause we cause we like we we support causes and we we buy like, you know, non con non conflict diamond, non con you know, stuff that's made with non conflict materials. We we buy thing we make sure that we buy things that do not that have fair fishing practices. We make sure that fair food thing. We don't use products that test on animals, and we do all these kind of things. But yet we don't have clear guidelines in the gaming space and in the tech space of buy of not buying from problematic companies. Like I'm not saying like hey if you're gonna play play X game that's fine. But at least, but at least acknowledge the fact that these companies are not good companies, and be like, "Hey, guy, I love Borderlands Three, but Randy Pitchford is a honking piece of shit." Now you can do that, and that's better, and that's better for you to do that because I support. I'm buying the game because I support the people who made the game, not the the guy who's running the company that made the game possible. And you can say that, and you can be like, "I'm not buying the game because of Randy Pitchford." And I think Randy Pitts is a piece of shit, but I'm going to support the game because I want to support the developers and the people who do that. That's important. because But you cannot say, you could still say, hey, I love the game, but the people who made it are assholes. Or the people who are in management are assholes. You know, that's the best thing that you can, that's the best thing that you could do is call out, is call out evil, for, is call out evil and these bad negative companies. Right. But if, and if you're not going to do it, shut the fuck up. If you're not going to call out bad things, if you're not going to call out bad people and bad practices, then stop talking. Just enjoy what you do and just shut up. And I mean that, and that part is the part that makes me want to like scream into the void at like two in the morning because it's having to, like, honestly yeah. speaking, I would like to not have to make moral and philosophical choices whenever exactly. I boot up my Steam account. Exactly. I would really just not, I would really enjoy that. Right. I really don't want to do it anymore. But I'm just like, I. I want to play Red Dead, fine, but I know, but I can still say, hey, you, you're that, like, say, I don't support Crunch. Give me the game when I want the game, and that's all I want the game for, but do not treat these people like crap. I vote, I love your game, but you need to pay more people, and you need to pay your people, and you need to let, and you need to, you need to break down the institutionalized Crunch that has, the, that has, absolutely envelop this whole entire community mm -hmm. anybody can wait it. on the game we can wait on these games yes we love these games we can wait on these games i am so i am so i am so i can in the meantime i can play these other games mm -hmm. these great games those great games being by companies who do not crunch their employees that are really i mean because y'all literally don't have anywhere to go we have nowhere to go take your time <laughs> you know <laughs> you know what i'm saying like Mm. Whatever, but that's what I'm saying. I can still, I can still love my games. I can still love, I can still love the company. I can still love the games and the people who make them. But I can still say that the management is a piece of shit for doing so. That's what we could. That's what we can do. You know, that's what I'm saying. I'm not buying this game because of Randy Pitchford. Now you're taking 
the work and product yes. the work product you're taking the work product of everybody that was that, that happened to be responsible that happened to be working under randy pitchford and now they're having to suffer because you because you think randy pitchford's an asshole i can still play borderlands 3 and still call randy pitchford an asshole i could do both i could do both things and that's the one thing i like um this um they Jeez, I don't even know what to call. I don't even know what to call these YouTube channels and stuff now. Um, it was a company, uh, kind of funny, uh, founded by Greg Miller, formerly of IGN. Mm-hmm. Um, they do a Borderlands show right. that's directly partnered with um, Gearbox because of or Borderlands, or whatever. But like right. in the next breath, like the next day, if there is a story saying, you know, Gearbox did this, Randy Pitcher did that. Oh, you best believe they will be covering it with bells and whistles on. They do not give a fuck. It's mm-hmm. he, the Greg Miller talks about. It, so he put these. It's in their contract that they are that they are still allowed to cover the news about that company the way they see fit. If it's some shitty news, oh, we're still going to talk about it. Like you know, hey, sure, we talked about how awesome this new DLC is, but you know. Let let your boy try to do a another magic trick with an underage woman, and oh yeah, we're going to rake him over the coals for this. We yeah. do not care. We do not care. So yeah, you, I mean it's you. You need us more than we need you. Oh yeah. So please, yeah, don't. That, get, yeah, it, 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 good it, exposure. It, yeah, it gets to me where people are like, yeah, I'm gonna boycott this cup. Like I'm gonna boycott this company by not binding against it. Well. No, like the developers, the people who are suffering, they're depending on you to buy this game. Like you are hurting the developers, not the executives you're trying to boycott in this scenario. Um. So yeah, please. Yeah. Make sure you let people know like you do not approve of the practices. Don't just stop buying the game because you're not helping the cause. You're kind of hurting it. If something doesn't work for you, then say, hey, this doesn't work for me. And I'm like, like, loot boxes don't work for you. Microtransactions don't work for you. Season pass. Stop buying into these things. And then you just speak on to what you speak on. Mm -hmm. And just say, oh, I'm not going to buy this because X. Because it's not a a fundamental practice. And then sooner or later, people are going to start going to listen to you and be like, okay, yeah, let's see what we can do. I mean, you see Call of Duty, stop that shit. Stopped it real quick. Well, no, it won't quit. No, nah, that won't well, quit. <laughs> that won't well, quit. Well, well, eventually, I mean, <laughs> Ooh, it took them a while, and it, it was expensive. Luckily, I didn't buy any yeah. of that. But oh, I didn't buy any of that. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it won't quit. Though. It took them forever. I ain't played a I ain't played a Call of Duty game since Modern Warfare on the Xbox 360, and that look, was I'm telling you, this out. one, the, the Modern Warfare that's out now. Oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Oh, it's good. I'm sure it is. Oh, it's it amazing. Not... I'm telling you, it was the best $60 oh, I spent. Oh, I'm sure it is. It was, I ain't that's, it's a great, like, that story was amazing. I, I bought it because of that story. I ain't even touched the multiplayer. <laughs> Except for gun game. I do play gun game now. I do yeah. like gun game. Yeah. Uh, but yes, The Last of Us Part 2, June 19th, Ghost of Tsushima, July 17th. Please, please. These, these are hardworking developers who put the blood, sweat, and tears into it. Again, there was a guy who almost got killed in the in the in the um, Narnie Dog offices for The Last of Us. Please support him. Support that guy. If anything. Hey, y'all got you remember Google Stadia? No? Nobody remembers Google Stadia? <laughs> You already forgot yeah. about it. Um, where? Hmm. Stadia, Stadia. Uh-huh. Um, what was that? Some like nineteen eighties movie or something? No, it's actually this. It's a um, streaming video game console ish thing that came out last year from Google. Um, plays your games in the cl- in, in the cloud. It, it really cool sounding technology that was only made better. You know, by Xbox and NVIDIA. No, basically. Because, you know, they like, had betas. Like they had proper betas like, beforehand. Mm, 
Ubisoft is like, hey, we think you're cool, so sure. Ubisoft mm-hmm. thinks everybody's cool. Mm, yeah. You, you, Ubisoft gets in bed with everybody. You're not wrong. You're not <laughs> That's what I love about them. You get, you can get a Ubisoft game anywhere. Yep. I don't think I. Really, <sighs> I don't think I. Pl- I don't think I paid for a Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, they be just giving them away. They, they, just, be give, they just be giving. They just gave away. They gave away Assassin's Creed too, and I'm like. I bought this. I bought this. Oh, I bought boy. this game on PS3, and they just gave it to me on PC. I got two. I got uh, three. Black Flag. Uh, yeah, I think I own twenty games. copies of Black Flag. Yeah, a couple copies of Black Flag. I'm just waiting for Syndicate to come free, and then I can. <laughs> I think I own that on PS4. Yeah. Um, and hey, we got more Assassin's Creed news later. Um. Oh yeah! Oh, Isn't yeah. this our friendly reminder that that wait didn't they like open up access for Stadia Pro for a little while or something like they that? They did. Well, so if you sign up for Stadia, you um, get two months free of Stadia Pro. Right. Uh, but Stadia did like their little direct earlier this week, and they announced three titles are coming to Stadia Pro or coming to Stadia. First off is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds Pioneer Edition. Who? It's coming to all Stadia Pro members. It's normally $40. It includes the PUBG base game, Survival Pass, Cold Front, and a Stadia exclusive skin. So you can now play PUBG in the cloud. Hold on. So now you can play PUBG. Was that, was that, play PUBG. Was PUBG and, one of these three titles? It was. It's available yeah. right now. PUBG, is that what you said? I, I did say player unknowns I battlegrounds. To, I just want to confirm that PUBG was, was what you said here. Yeah, yes, um, um, saying I can confirm I'm done. That, Good I, night. That, I, that I that I said We're player out. unknowns I'm battlegrounds. Out. Like yeah, you, so you can play you can play the hot you can play the hottest game of 2018 on stage. <laughs> wow, he turned a whole light off. For some reason, your video is really delayed. So, like, it was like you were there and then you weren't. (laughs) Yes, the way that I am, the way that I am bitter about (laughs) the fact that these people slid out the cut and said, "Hey, you can play PUBG in 4K." I mean, did you think they were gonna get Fortnite? Most of y'all know that you're over here hacking the game by having it on the lowest settings anyway, and no one's playing PUBG on a 4K TV with that sound or like graphic quality. What are y'all doing? Uh, well, you think they were gonna get Fortnite? Were you here last week? You think Epic is gonna play with Google? Everything. I don't need to steal. You know what I think about that, and that's all I'm gonna say. (laughs) You can play. You can play Fortnite on the Switch. Oh boy! Meanwhile, Zombie Army Four: Dead War is coming to the service, and Ooh. let's see, Steam World Heist is coming. Hold on, what? Like I'm just I'm looking at this screen, oh. like incredulous that they put this on the pro account. The pro account. They were just like, this is the tier that we want you to pay money for. Mm-hmm. Not play not play Steam World Quest. I just I don't think that's a game to be like, hey yo, it's on Stadia. Uh, uh. Mm. I, I mean, mean it's, you should have guilt the one exclusive title. But um so yeah, uh they, they announced a, a slew of games that are coming to their pro service. Um, one thing that is not in this article that I meant to include, it was it was in a separate one. Um, EA is bringing their games to Stadia as well. Uh, let me see. I can just Google it. EA Stadia. There we go. Um, Stadia? I'll include this in the, in the, in the, in the um, outline. Um, yes, one of the biggest complaints about Google Stadia for ages has been lack of major games, but that's slowly starting to change today. Google has announced EA titles are coming to Stadia and that starts with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. So the, so the newest Star Wars game is showing up to Stadia. They're also bringing Madden and FIFA to Stadia as well. 
So, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about EA? Mm. Still oh, coming out of okay. Origin. Because remember, they came out of Origin. They're putting stuff into Steam. Now they're putting stuff in Stadia. Um, do you think that them coming them, them coming out to Steam was them preparing to come out to Stadia? Like they had to start somewhere? One, who, two, who's starting in Stadia? <laughs> Guilt? Whom's? Guilt? What, what man is out here? <laughs> I thought this was a good idea. Who, whoever yeah. Guilt is? I don't know. Stadia um, and Start, they have kind of the same letters. I guess we can work with that. Um, Let's see. But Baldur's Gate 3 is a Stadia game, isn't it? That's not... Is Baldur's Gate 3 Stadia exclusive? I feel like at this point, everything that I hear about Stadia is like, look at this game I'm probably never going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all let me know when it's on a Humble Bundle, okay? Thanks. I imagine yeah. if Stadia tanks, they'll like give you Steam codes or something, right? Like... That doesn't... That doesn't make sense. <laughs> that doesn't like, if, make like sense. you bought these games, they should at least give you like a Steam code. That does no. EA is not going to do that. Well, EA, EA, well is, EA is on EA is on Steam though. But see, EA is on Steam because it makes sense for to be on to be on this to be on a platform that has like a lot of registered users on it. Right. So. So, so but Stadia. Who gonna be? Who gonna be on? Who on Stadia? But that's what I'm saying. Like when it ultimately fails, yeah. And you bought these games. Do you think they'll redeem them? Like they'll have you redeem Steam codes so that we can still own these games? EA gonna do that. EA gonna make you buy them games twice. EA said you. Oh, so you bought them on Stadia? Well, you can buy them joints on Steam now. That sounds like a. That sounds like a. That's not something like maybe GeForce Now might do. Oh, do you, what what games are on GeForce now though? I mean, they're not on there <laughs> because again, they're good because I mean, they would, at, at least that, at least Stadia has that on GeForce now. While GeForce yeah. is losing games, yeah. Stadia is at least getting them. Because the only reason why they're the only reason why they're on there is to make people pay for games multiple times. That's what they want. That's what they want people to do. They want people to buy it on Stadia. Stadia folds and then they can just buy the game on Steam or Origin, however they want to do it. Basically, EA, whenever Google gets bored with this project too, and and they kill it, then they're gonna be like, "Oh, cool, we I'm on Steam, feel every, per- we on Steam, everybody." Hey, it's you know? a shame it doesn't transfer. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to feel cool. personally attacked when <laughs> Sin says, "You know, oh, when Google gets done with this little project," because I feel like that's me all day. I just work on something until I get bored and will never work on it again. <laughs> like, yep, we're done here. Right, but like me know, picking up Photoshop. It, yeah, it's fun today, but tomorrow, yeah, I'll be done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I but, mean, if you, but uh, T. Lee, I, I promise, I promise, I'll still work on Photoshop. Yeah, but you know, if if you if you don't do if you don't do your Photoshop, that you know, hundreds of people go out of go out lose jobs. And no, I just get yelled at by Telia. That's all. That yeah, is. You, just get, you just get yelled just at. Yelled. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's more and that's more entertainment value than anything yeah. else. It's not like people I, don't I, lose their jobs when 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 a multinational company gets bored of a project. Right, that's right. Some, that somebody's probably that somebody's probably like passion project. I mean, Stadia sounds good in the, theory, and it's good and it's good and it's decent in practice. But there's too much. But there's too much multinational nationalness in in this in this passion project. In this, in this, um, what's the word I'm trying to think? Innovation, where it's like the only way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to work on all manner of devices. Doesn't matter if it's iOS or Google or you know iOS or Android. It's just gonna work because it's good like that. It's so right. good you can play it on everything. Yeah, it's not gonna work. That's not that's not gonna work. And so they want to they want to control it on these things. But the only problem is. We don't have good. We don't have good internet. We don't got good bandwidth. A lot of us don't have good speeds. A lot of us live in the podunks. But we don't have good speed. 
and we have to use particular devices for particular things that we don't have access to. Right. So yeah, when this thing, yeah, so yeah, when this thing fails, and it's gonna fail, be, you know, through no, you know, people gonna be people, people who bought into it is gonna be kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ass out in the snow. That's mm. pretty much what it's gonna be. So, <laughs> so I see you. yeah, I got your point there. Uh, I see what mm. you, uh, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, PUBG's on Google Stadia. Have fun. Hooray. Hooray. That being said, if you like experimenting with things because they're fun, you know, have at it. Yeah, two months. Mm -hmm. Two months free if you have not gotten if you have not got into it uh, by now. Yeah. Actually, hold Mm -hmm. on. Wait, is it? Hold on. Let's see. Stadia.google.com. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. I can try now. Yeah. Because we did. Because we did talk about. We didn't talk about. We talked about this. Was it the initial Tech Talk? With the revival episode? Mm-hmm. Where, we, where we was like, literally, yo, they could they could have saved them so much trouble and energy if they just said early access. Yeah. Two words. Yeah. And it still could have been mm-hmm. early access. Yeah, like th- them them putting this out, this ain't helping. This, they could have took helping. however many long however many years they could have took to get it, and they could have still had people on the hook. Still had people on the hook. Oh, we got problems. Wait, not... Yeah, we have issues. It's okay. We early access. We'll get it all settled up. Oh, okay. I'm so you can't really up. sign. It, up. This doesn't allow me to just straight sign in to this to this app. I don't know. I might I might try it. If it, if yeah, it's I'm... free now, I I might try. It. There's no reason for me not to try it. Yeah, I'm I'm with I'm with, T, I'm with T on this. Do people still play PUBG? I thought people. I'm still I... thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it. But I've been playing Fortnite, but yeah, it's a thing. As long as I'm yeah. not playing Valorant, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Y'all want some more free games? I know Anka does mm-hmm. with her um, Xbox Gold subscription all the way to 3022. V Rally for a sensible world of soccer lead a low key month for Xbox game with gold this month. Plus Overlord 2 and Warhammer Inquisition. So, yeah, not a good lineup for Xbox um, Games of Gold um, this month. But, yeah. You got some games. You get that's a, All right, so between Games of Gold and Game Pass, what do you guys think of the, the value proposition? So, let's say if you were to pick up, like, Game Pass Ultimate. Um, I forget what I forget what's that's like 15 bucks a month for Xbox off gold and game pass. Yeah. It's like four games yeah. a month plus like just access to hundreds of games that you can just download whenever for 15 bucks a month. What, what, what do you, what do you guys think about that proposition now? Um, like if you just have an Xbox, you have Xbox and PC, um, and especially with Series X coming out soon, and what that means for their first-party titles going forward. How do you, how do y'all feel about like again just paying fifteen bucks a month and just like being set? Like new console comes out, you already got hundreds of games to play already out the gate. I don't know. Xbox isn't my thing, so I don't have a lot to say here. But if you just have, hey, you know, we have a couple of games coming out this month. It already comes with a backlog of a few hundred games. And here are the two that we have coming out in May. I think there's as going to be those things where really cool games come out some months. And sometimes you just get, hey, you're just getting a driving game this month. You're getting a volleyball game this month. You're getting a soccer game. It's cyclical. It's fine. Right. From what I can see, that's that's about it there. Do either of you two have Xbox stuff? Oh yeah, most of have opinions out here. Um, I I for, don't, but I have opinions. But I'll let Mitch go. Mitch go man. For so for me, I got the ultimate. So all right, so I picked up the Xbox One X back when they were doing that. Hey, you can um you know get you can pick up an Xbox for like thirty bucks a month. You can get that payment plan, except it's a whole lot better than what you were going to get at like Aaron's or Rena Center, because that goes no interest. It was great. 
Um, and then, you know, I think it was E3 2019 when they announced like Game Pass Ultimate. And like, I think I paid a dollar, like a dollar because I had two years of gold and two years of Game Pass. So I paid a dollar and all of a sudden I got access to everything on my PC too. It was great. Like, I don't think I paid for Xbox Live or yeah, Xbox Live for like years. Um, it's at a point where honestly, I do not have to really buy a game ever again. Um, between Xbox Live uh, or between Game Pass Ultimate, Humble Bundle, um, like I was using, I had Origin Access, um, at one point, but when I was switching jobs, I had to cut all that off. Yeah, with these subscription services, like I understand that there is a there's a point where they remove games. You won't be able to play them again. But to have a service to where I don't have to be afraid to try new games. I can just like, you know, hey, I want to try that new Gears Tactic games that came out. Like I can just download it to my PC and it's just there ready for me to play whenever I want it. Um, I'd like to try the, the new Yakuza. I downloaded it to my PC. I've not launched them, but they're there. I can just launch them whenever I want. Um, just having access to these services, it makes it for me, especially on Microsoft side with the Game Pass Ultimate, it makes it worth it. Like if I do pick up a Series X, um, like let's say the manufacturing isn't impacted because of COVID-19, but the development, the release of a lot of these launch titles may be impacted. I'm good because I've got like hundreds, if not thousands of games that'll already be playable on this thing. I was like, well, I've got this 4K TV. I just plug up my Series X to it and just continue on like I normally would. Or in the case of my PC, like I just buy a new graphics card and I have to worry about it at all because I'm pretty sure graphics card will be just about just as expensive as this console and I can get way more use out of it for a lot longer. Um. But yeah, I appreciate these the, these subscription services. Um, like if I want to buy the game and own it after they get removed, then so be it. By that time, they'll be so cheap and they put them on discount that we can buy them at a, at a, at a cheaper rate than you normally would. Right. Um, it's good that when Halo Infinite comes out, I can play it at launch. Regardless, whether I've got a Series X, an Xbox One, or a PC I will get to play Halo day one without having to put any money down for it. I just see it on the Game Pass app, download it to my computer, and just call it a day. I ain't got to wait in the line. None of that. Um, Kev, what, what what are your thoughts on it? Uh, as a person who doesn't have who does not have Xbox, but it does but does have PC and does have Game Pass on PC, I do like I do like the the ease and fluidity of being like, I can just pay X amount of money a month. I can have access to these games. I could try these games out. And I have no, like, there's no barrier entry. Like, I could sit down and I could play this game or I could play that game. And games that I typically would not buy because of either I don't have an X, like, I don't have an Xbox. I don't have, like, I'm not really into the whole, you know, like I don't have an Xbox, so I don't have really access to these games. Um, I can now just have it and just being able to have it like the fluidity of being like, I'm on PC, I'm on Xbox and I, you know, back and forth, cross play connectivity, so to speak. I like that. And um, if I was an X, if I was an Xbox person, I'd be like, yeah, this is, this is the best thing. Gay Pass Ultimate. You know, Xbox Live Ultimate, have all that, you know, one price, don't have to pay for it. And then I can still like, and even on the creator and creator side of it, you know, having like day one games that you don't have to pay for with no barrier, like with no barrier entry. Like I could try Gears 5 for a couple of days, see how I like it. Oh, I don't like it, you know, uninstall it. But I don't have to go through the process of me spending sixty dollars on a game that I may or may not like, and it gives me the gives me the ability to test these, to try these games, love on these, like fight, figure out if I love on these games or not. 
and to have day one games that come out like i would probably try i would definitely probably try halo just to, just to be like okay let me see how this game's all about you know like get access so you know if i if i did if i did want to i could without not without a whole bunch of like with like a whole bunch of like oh shit oh man it is you know lamenting over games like i could just be like oh yeah i could try that i i would love if playstation had like a a thing a a kind of a system of this not saying it on pc but just having their own being like hey pay x amount of money well they they and, do and i mean they do but it's like it, it, I, I don't think it's worth it as opposed to like game pass yeah because yeah, like pass playstation like, now was it, it it was good. interesting but you were streaming that as opposed right. to actually downloading the game but mm-hmm. now you can download those games but it's still, it just don't hit like Game Pass did. Yeah. But like I said, yeah, I I dig it. I I dig it a lot, and um, it 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 does it does kind of like because if I if it was like, hey yo Kev, we got a Series X for you, I'd be like, yeah sure. I would I would totally get I would totally get Game Pass. I would totally get um you know Xbox Live, and I'd be right I'd be right up in there with y'all like. You know, play Halo, play you know, trying out Halo Infinite on either my PC or my Xbox or whatever. Like, I think it's a, I think it's a good, good like system. And then being able to go back and play those old Xbox games and Xbox 360 games, like, like I've been, like I've been mad Jones in to play. I uh, at one point I was mad Jones in to play uh the first Red Dead, but. I can't because my P my PS4 is de- not my PS4 my PS3 is dead mm-hmm. with my with my copy of the thing. so that would be so that'd been really so that'd be really cool to get an Xbox One or Xbox Series X and then be able to go back and play those old games and see how those old games play you know even back to the original Xbox and I'm like that's really really good that's a level of backwards compatibility that I'm literally am wanting to thump uh, PlayStation in the head about because. I want to play those old PS1 games. I want to play those old PS2 games. I want to play those old PS3 games. And and then ha- just be able to pay a price every month and being able to do that. Or being able to access have access to them on the PlayStation Network where I can either rebuy them again at the PlayStation Store or rebuy them again. I, I, I don't. Right. So right. It, it, it sucks, though. Um, Nimbus says... Um... I think the Game Pass is worthwhile expenditure for the kind of returns you get over the years. You might use the Game Pass you pay far less for the combined monetary value of all the games you'd actually play. And that, I mean, yeah. Like, I play countless games with Game Pass. And, like, again, like, for me, like, I paid my Game Pass up front. So, like, for me, like, they are, for all intents and purposes, free. Like I don't have to worry about playing an Xbox first party game until 2022. Which is insane to think about. Like the new Forza, the new Halo, the new Gears. Like and then too, like I don't even need an Xbox anymore. Like I cannot pick up the Series X and just play them on my PC and not have to buy anything. It's it's nuts. Like Microsoft, like over the year, like these past seven years, Microsoft has really kind of changed their image for the better. Yeah. And we've all had Don Matrick to thank for that. <laughs> because he done fucked up. I yeah. wonder what he's up to nowadays. You can't, you can't fuck, you can't fuck up more than Don Matrick fucked no. up. It's like, mm-mm. that man, that man was finna, that man was finna, that man was finna fuck the whole game up. And then Don Matrick got up out of there. Who's it? Like Seamus? Who's who's the new guy now? Oh, you talking about Phil Spencer? Yeah, Phil Spencer. Phil Spencer was like Mm-mm. that dude's a rock star. That man, that man, that man came in. That man came. That man changed the whole game up. Yes. Like like how like House did for the PlayStation itself. He came in and he said, "Look, I'm gonna tell you right now. Whatever going on right now." Kudaragi, no. He did like it's like Don Matrick and Kudaragi was about to mess the whole game up 
and then House and Spencer had to come up and write the ship. <laughs> yeah, like they, <laughs> like, they it, it's interesting to see like the gaming space move out of Japan. Right. It was like, well, Microsoft, they were always in the US. Mm-hmm. But for PlayStation to shift from a Japan focused company to a European focused company, um, to where like, yeah, Nintendo is still, th- is still thriving in Japan, but yeah, it's really interesting to see like with everybody shifting out of Japan and then seeing just Nintendo stay there. Like, okay, so yeah, we can see how this looks in the three bigger in the three big markets and see, like, I guess just look at their management styles and see what's going to go on. Like, I think it's still telling now the fact that yeah. we've still not heard anything from PlayStation as to, you know, what the PS5 is. Like, I know we're coming up to E3, we're coming up to the time where E3 was supposed to be. We've not heard anything. Like, the most we've seen is controller, and they only announced it because they were starting to ship it to developers, and they didn't want that to leak. Um, I got, I got hoping, I'm hoping they drop something in May because they cannot drop something in June. Because if they drop something in June, there's going to be a whole bunch of chat. There's going to be a whole bunch of chatter in June because everybody's going to be, you know. Well, and then Microsoft's gonna be like, "Hold my beer, most specs." You know, we'll, you gotta we'll, get it out. Well, well, hopefully, we'll find out soon. We've got some more information on that coming up, but we do have more information from PlayStation. City Skyline and Farming Simulator 19 will be your PlayStation Plus games for May. So, if you so, thought games with gold was dull, talk about you like destroying extra crops instead of taking them to people who could use them. Are they going to well, tell you what to do with like millions well, of extra potatoes? This is Farming like, Simulator is this, 19. Is this the, does this that is, come with the game tutorial? This is Farming Simulator 19, not Farming Simulator COVID-19. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I, I skipped Nimbus here. The thing that oh. the thing that the game passes over what the PlayStation consoles have is that Microsoft is an umbrella company that also develops operating systems. So they have the legal and technical expertise to port these games into a more and connected platform. Exactly. And that and it's about time Microsoft realized that I can't themselves. Huh? I, I'm just I'm just out of your wildness. I am so sorry. <laughs> no, but, it's okay. But <laughs> you went there. You went there. And look, hey, you had the courage to do it. Do not apologize for that. You I'm did it. Apologize for that. Yep. Don't um, pause, don't, but yeah, don't like, for the truth, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You were good. Uh-huh. You good. Um, good. But yeah, it, it's about time Microsoft realized that. Like, hey, we were a services company. We're a software company. We're a services company. Sure, we stumbled into hardware, and they made some terrible decisions in that. To where again, what, like, not sure if people knew this or not. Satya Nadella, the C, the current CEO of Microsoft. Was he about to axe play? Or was it not place it? Was about to axe the Xbox division. Like, was like, no, this isn't making any money. It is just terrible. But then Phil Spencer, he came in and he changed it. Like now, Xbox is making Microsoft so much money. Like now that they've implemented these studios. services, like I don't. <laughs> again, I, let let Anka tell you. Anka will fill you in. She knows what's mm-hmm. going on. She knows what's up. Yeah, Uncle will fill in the gaps. Yeah, for us. Microsoft has been doing some good things, and it, it's it's time that they've leveraged the the platforms that they have to allow us to you know be able to get these Xbox games on PC, and then not be afraid to maybe lose a sale from that. Because like I me mean, again, like maybe I will buy Series X. Maybe I'll buy an RTX twenty eighty Ti or a thirty eighty. There are rumors that that card may be on its way. Um, but yeah, like maybe I'll buy a graphics card as opposed to a console. Microsoft does not care. They are getting that money regardless because you're still putting the money into the services that they offer. And they can make more money that way than probably selling a console. So yeah, Microsoft don't care. And that's what I love about them. Like it's at this point, it's very, very pro-consumer of them which that's the which that's a shocker like, yeah oh yeah but then again they gotta be careful because you know then we have another internet explorer situation um so 
Epic Games also has some free games that are available too. Of course, if you did not know, Epic gives away like one to two free games like every two weeks. Yeah. This time, they are forcing you. Oops, I hit the space bar on my keyboard there. They are forcing you. And again, this is this is a second reminder because apparently, I'll, Sin, I don't know if people are listening. We might have to just really spell it out for them. Please. Can you um can you just put your pointer on, on the screen there where the title is? Uh and yeah, then there we go. Um, like an yeah, there we go. Just, just, just like right there. Like, that right like, there? Like, that that one? Yeah, just, just right yeah. where that title is, right uh-huh. there. Right uh-huh. there. Yep, yeah. yeah, that part. Just can we just go ahead and zoom that in? Yeah, hold on. Can we just uh, see control plus real quick. There Let's we just go. go ahead and just, like make that yeah. there we go. Nice and large for our audience out here. Right there, there right there, right there. Right, right, hold on, I yeah, got to yeah. make it small. There we go. There, right, there we go. It fits yeah. now. Yeah, there, there you go. Right that right there. there. That, that, yep. that require yeah, two-factor right authentication. Right. They turn it on, mm-hmm. and if they turn it yeah. on, right, they get free video games. Mm-hmm. What more can you? What more can you ask for? Just, just free. Free video games. Free video games. All you have to do is two clicks. Now, granted, these games were already free to begin with, but... But, still, two clicks. Two! It's right there. It's clicks? It's right there. Click. Right, right there. Done. Right. Two, so, two F8. this is your now third reminder. Uh-huh. Third During reminder. this Tech Talk stream today, two factory or stuff. Do that. Do that. Do that. Yes. Do that. Do that. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Do it. Do Again, it. Twitch. Do you can it. do it on Twitch. Do it right now. Do Don't play around. Don't play with this. But yeah, so other than that, other than two-factor authentication for the King and Amnesia, the Dark Descent are your free games coming to the Epic Game Store. They should be available now. Yeah. Uh, but yes, please, please, please. Do it. I cannot stress Kill. the irony of Epic Games pushing for increased security measures. <laughs> you know, do you know how serious that, that is fair? We do have an audience comment here that there is a certain level of irony with yeah. Epic asking to do that, but it's still good practice. Please do it. Yeah, that, 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 that's just serious. That's just how serious the, it is in these streets right now. You want people stealing your V bucks? Now I'm just basically waiting for Valorant to be like, hey, we require two off um two factor authentication. Did y'all hear so did y'all hear how bad that um that anti-cheat is? Like if you install the game, you have to reboot your computer. Can we just have a word of prayer? Why? What game what game requires you? <laughs> To do a whole ass reboot in 2020. What game? It don't even look good. I mean, it's, it's just play it's, CSGO. It's, it's futuristic CSGO. Just That's play CSGO. <laughs> just play CSGO. It's like ain't that you, free? It's you? No, it's not free. It's like ten bucks. It's like you know, maybe maybe five bucks if you can get it. You know. I have literally two things that involve me ever having to restart the computer. That is a system update tree from Microsoft and my antivirus software. Valorant is neither of these things. <laughs> Absolutely not. Some, some, dri- some drivers don't even make you yeah. re- um The NVIDIA driver updates NVIDIA used to. They used to be, be notorious. Like, update your yeah. monitor and driver settings in real time without you having to restart. Nothing. Yes, what I love mean? that now. Oh my god! Like every time I had to do a driver update, I was like, "All right, I guess I'm going to take some time so I can reboot my computer." But nope, just goes right on through. Like, be like, "Hey, before I watch this YouTube video, let me go ahead and." (laughs) Yup. Before I go watch the whole entire story of The Last of Us Two, let me go and update these Nvidia drivers real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm finna. Because this thing, this thing, this thing finna be a whole three minutes out of my life. When the last, so, so Sam, when The Last of Us One came out, I was working third shift at Red Hat. Through the course of two nights, I watched the entirety of The Last of Us in a series of YouTube videos. 
that were in total 10 hours long. Oh, wow. It was uh, it was the movie event of that week for me. Yeah. I think, yeah. Watch the whole thing. It was great. The, the Last of Us is a good video game. Never will it's play good, it, but it's a good it's a good game. Never, it's a good again. story. It's a good little movie. I'm just I'm I'm exactly I'm in, I'm exactly with Major on this. Little, little, it's a little mini, it's a little, like a little mini it. series, right? It was great, but but here's the but here's the funny thing. When when it became because they gave it away for free on PlayStation PlayStation uh, Plus, I I I acquired it, and I was like. Just in case for the, t- just as it was free, and I could not not get it for free, but even then, I still not gonna play that game because it's like I could not not get it for free because then it'd be like, how? What you mean you could you want to get Last of Us for free? It was free, so I got it for free. In case if somebody just, just else want to be. <laughs> case if somebody else want to come over maybe one of the boo loves you know maybe one of the boo loves might want to come over and you know and they want to look at it or whatevs or you know they want to go they want to come and play it that's fine or one of my friends and my cousins they might like i never played last of us oh you want to play last of us I'm, let me install it and put it on my playstation and then you can go play it and i can watch you get emotionally uh you know turmoil you know you know emotionally scarred at you know all the all that whole game but see i could not not get it for free because it was free you know and same thing goes with uncharted 4 it was like it's free Mm -hmm. i have the disc but here's the funny part i had the disc i had to uninstall because see that's what pisses me off about a playstation sometimes you can you can be like okay you got it but then it's like PlayStation's like but you got the disc though but I want to get it on PSN but you got the disc though why you but you gave it for free but you still got the disc so I literally had to delete the entire game off my PlayStation reinstall the reinstall the digital copy so it's like okay good thing my good thing one thing so I do I'm like curious. about PlayStation my saves went over my saves carried over. But see, now I'm curious what would happen if you put the disc back in. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. Just, just put it back in and see what it tells you. So no. you already own this. No, I already own it. I, I like I say I own it twice now. So I'm like, no, I can't do that. Mm-mm. No. God. I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Horizon to come free so I can get that one too. <laughs> so I can be like, so I can watch Turn Your Face to the Sun. See, that was just, I, well, I cannot read old English to save my life. Thou shalt not ask for prayer lest I pray. <laughs> oh my God, it's great. Like, oh, my goodness. English and Latin, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, what else do we got up here? Yeah, so again, Epic Games, please, please, again, yeah. we cannot stress this enough. Two factor Two factor authentication. Just do it. Every. Thing. Everything, all your stuff, all God your social bless media, it, people, you know. And the last story is coming in hot today. Marks off to show the Xbox Series X games via a live stream next week. That's right, where Sony has still yet to tell us what to expect from the PlayStation Five outside of a two-tone controller and a PS Five logo. We have been getting. So much information. Yeah, we have about the Series so, X. Like seriously, though, we we seriously have them going. Hey, guess what? We're finally going to tell you why we made this logo in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> I mean, it's it's at a point where <laughs> people are going to start asking Microsoft. Look, look. If you keep telling us, you're just going to spoil the console. You're spoiling it now. I can't stand people when they look at trailers. Oh my god, they sold so much of the story in the in the in the, in the trailer. Like, no, they didn't. Like, I hated people. Saying, look, if you want to be spoiled on Final Fantasy VII remake, don't watch like watch this trailer. Like, I'm playing that game now, and I saw that trailer. Not spoiled at all. I'm gonna tell you something. That honeybee, that honeybee end scene. 
If y'all haven't seen that, I'm that's something I will not spoil. That scene changed my life. I seen I seen that when it was poorly okay. rendered, and even then, so, it's like it's like I really don't know like, how we ended up in the honeybee in scene from the remake, but let me just say I'm here for that whole scene. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I'm here lit, for it. They did yeah. a real good job with that scene. And it was like it was I, delicious. So they showed a part of it. In yeah. a trailer, not the one that said, oh, it'll spoil everything, but the one before where they actually just show, you know, Cloud in there. I said, okay, that looks interesting. And I realized I was at that part in the game. So, All right, I'm not going to stop playing until I get to that scene. I was not disappointed that scene met no nay exceeded my expectations for something it was one of those scenes that someone could have done incredibly wrong if they were not careful yes to tell that they cared about these details it they did not so have to do that at good. all that's the whole thing yes. it was what, so good what really got me though was the line that i because i forgot the character's name he said it in the trailer where he was talking about, like, you know, beauty is not defined by gender. And I'm like, okay, that was interesting. You you included that in trailer. That's like, interesting. I want to see. That, yes. Like, I want to see where that goes in the game. So to be in there and just playing that scene, just watching it all play out. And it still hit that. That line still hit. I expected it, and it still hit. And I'm like, you know what? Nah. Just, just on that alone, Final Fantasy Remake is my game of the year. I don't need to... I do not care if this is the last AAA game we ever get in 2020. That was enough off of that scene alone. That game is great as it is. But they did something with the scene that could have... Because it's Japanese, it's anime as fuck. They could have oh, fucked yeah. that up so yeah. poorly. Yeah. But they nailed it. Yeah, they're just they're just like moments, and because I because like I said I re, I remember playing like Final Fantasy at Final Fantasy Seven at least like two or three times, and I can remember like instances and scenes where you have like beats, 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 beats. like seeing like a fully rendered seeing a fully rendered Rudin Reno, seeing like Shinra, seeing like the 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 assault on Shinra. Seeing like the the blowing up the of the, the the this and the, that. I mean, I'm not really like doing like big spoilers because it's you know it's an old game. Yeah. So I'm just like showing off beats, you know, like pits and beats. It's it's like seeing those moments of being like, yes, it's like hell yeah, it's like hell yeah the game. It's like you see that and you're like yeah, it's like the music. It's it's what you kind of imagined in your head in 97. Right. Because, like, you realize, okay, wow, this is great for video games in 1997, but you still right. got to use your imagination. Exactly. So for them exactly. to really use that imagination, fill that out, as like, oh, yeah, this is definitely how I thought I saw this in, in, in 97. This is great. Also, exactly. for me, it was as much of a transition because, like, I watched Advent Children, and a lot of those design decisions were kind of influenced by that a little bit. Actually, right. we need to talk about that too because how many of you all saw Advent Children and went like, my God, please go back and remake Final yes. Fantasy VII the way you yep. made this movie uh -huh. and then they finally came through uh -huh. with it. And it's yep. kind of like, you made us wait forever. You're almost at the level of Kingdom Hearts 3 with the waiting, but it was well, worth to, it. To be though, fair, to be when, fair, we when were... I seen Sethiroth in Advent Children, I was like, this is this is amazing. I'm sorry. Like, I was a part of that group of people who saw that PS3 tech demo. Yeah. And wanted it then. Yeah, we were like, so y'all doing was, this? Are we are we doing this? Because yeah, you know, that, was, that looks that good. Whole, I want that. That was a whole generation behind us. Like and that was we the were, beginning we of the PS3, and here we are at the end of the PS4, and we finally got it. Right. It was like we were we were wanting it then. And then and it was it was spectacular then and now it's just like 
this is a, this is a, this is amazing. Like, like we, we, can, we go back to how we don't want the developers to sit there and crunch to try to meet deadlines. Right. As much as yes, we wanted it. They kept telling us we weren't going to get it. Um, there was that troll from, I think it was PSX 2014 or 2015 where they said right. they were bringing final fantasy seven to the, um, to the PlayStation four, but it was the PC port. Of the 97 game. Yeah. Um, like, fine. You know what? I waited. I'm glad I did. And I will wait for the other installments because if this is the level of love, attention, and care that they put into that game. Yes. I'll, I'm, I'll wait. I'll wait. I have no problems. We'll wait. We, uh, um, can I, I just want to insert a, um, please <laughs> a disclaimer. Uh huh. If you will, a, a note to the audience. There, listen, if you are out here mad at this game, I'm just going to put this out here. Only people who have anything bad to say about this game have things that are bad to say about it. A, because either JRPGs aren't your genre, period, at which point just turn off the game and play the games that you enjoy. Or B, y'all are stuck in nostalgia. Listen, I need y'all to not. This, I need y'all to oh die. Let this game yeah. be what it is. It grew, it evolved, it actually put, like, it actually made the background characters characters yes. and not just moving pixels on this screen. You, Wait, how like, is... have this whole game where you get to see people be and develop and all this other stuff. They treated this basically like, like a I, I don't, I don't know how I much of a spoiler here. this is, but how is Jesse so... For that. How how is why is Jesse so thirsty? Huh? I don't remember Jesse being that damn thirsty for Cloud. Oh, okay. We're, oh, oh, listen. Yeah, she, I, was, she she was keen on she was keen wrong, on that man. Still, so she was very keen on that man. Or or maybe like, maybe maybe because it was just in text and they were low polygons. Right. Like it we, it didn't it, it, and I was also young. It didn't hit. Like right. that, we, but yeah, we, as a thirty-two-year-old man yeah. listening to Jesse talk to Clutz, man, I'm gonna need you to go sit, go go sit, go sit over there, man, please. I mean, cool yourself. Someone give someone give this person some emergency water or something Oof. like that. Like she's 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 having a moment. But then you had some people complaining about the way that some of these characters were rendered because they didn't look like they came out of the dark spot of anime. Y'all listen, listen. If you have those needs, there are places for you to deal with that. Video game mediums don't need to be one. Just mm-hmm. enjoy the game. Please. Please. <sighs> sorry Let about that. Let people enjoy games. Yeah. Let people enjoy games. But yeah. So- sorry about that. Like, tangent. Just let- let, 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 people, let, let other people, people enjoy people, things that they enjoy. enjoy and also don't be the person out here talking about how if you enjoy Final Fantasy 7 or what have you in any form that you're like the worst person ever let people enjoy the things they enjoy let people enjoy the otherwise I'm sending like, KK like, after you yeah <sighs> I'll come after you Th- that, that being said um, yeah we're going to learn more about the Xbox Series X this week or next week <laughs> um yeah, so inside Xbox, May 7th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Um, what day is that? Let's see. May 7th. That's a Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Man, Ooh. I'm wondering. That's going to be, that's going to, that's going to line right up to the, that's going to line up right to the, po- we might have to call Audible for the podcast. Yeah, Sam, what are you doing Thursday morning? Hmm. Wait, what's happening? Thursday morning, um, ex, um, inside Xbox. Wait, are we? Wait, we? Wait, is that Pacific? Yep, that, that's that's next Eastern. Week on Thursday. Yep, Eastern. That's eleven a.m. Eastern eleven. Mm. Mm. What, what are you doing Thursday morning? I mean, that's just in time for your lunch break. Um, what am I doing next Thursday morning? I might have a meeting, but probably not. Might be covered. We I might, might, might have that. to go talk to some people. Maybe we can do a talk over. Mm. I mean, it's what we do. We talk tech. Mm. This is right there on right. a Thursday. Mm. Yeah, might have to. Might have to talk to some folks on that one. I think I can. I think I can squeeze that with y'all. 
yeah so stay tuned we'll let you guys know we might have an early show next thursday talk about yeah. this um xbox series x yeah all the all the juicy juicy tidbits because we're not the, getting anything for playstation uh-uh no what I missed the question. What happened? Okay. That wasn't a question. Oh, all right. On to other consoles, because again, I'm going to keep digging this in. Sony is not telling us anything. Nintendo is also not telling us anything. They are delaying their typical E3 Direct mm. in June. Um, I'm sad. It is believed to be a maybe COVID-19 related um but yeah so right you know it's not believed it's actually stated that um it's been pushed back due to complications rising from the coronavirus pandemic um so yeah if you're hoping to hear any news of any upcoming games upcoming titles from nintendo this summer have to hold on a little bit keep playing that animal crossing Keep trying to become that billionaire. I'm trying. I what do you think? What do you, what do you think would have been announced? Mm, probably, probably the probably like the holiday 2020 releases. Probably stuff because they always talk about the holiday 2020 releases in June. Uh, probably stuff from probably more teasers for products that we didn't that we probably already knew of maybe they might have maybe they might would have dropped uh another uh nintendo switch online retro app and then probably maybe released more games to it earthbound would have been night or earthbound would be nice do you think we would have heard about that um that super mario anniversary collection um I mean, Possible? it is it is a Mario anniversary, so mm-hmm. it would make sense for them to do that. Yeah, I know we probably would have heard something about 3D World. I know we would have heard something about 3D World because they've been that's been like the strongest of rumors is that there's gonna there's gonna be a, a Switch port of Super Mario 3D World, which I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with. I'm always good. I'm a, I'm always about playing Mario, playing more Mario games, and I would have definitely played it. Um, yeah, we probably would have heard more about more uh, Super Mario anniversary stuff. Um, Do you think they may mention a Switch Pro? Hey, everybody's asking for it. I don't think so. I mean, we can see, we see how powerful, like, the NVIDIA Shield is, which, um, is essentially just a Nintendo Switch that's just in a box. Right. I mean, honestly speaking, if I'm being real about it, what I'd like to what I'd like if we're gonna ask for Nintendo related things is, hey, can you do something to stop these people from buying switches the moment that they come out so that we don't have to <laughs> buy them for eight hundred dollars? I would appreciate that. Talk to these people. We get into like we get into like uh we territory of like of like demand almost where people are like buying stuff and scalping like what they did with Wii's like I just wish people were smart enough not to buy those though which I am so glad that that they are not I'm glad them I hope those I hope those I hope those uh I hope those console boxes get very dusty in y'all back rooms while y'all trying to flip switches and then meaning to flip trying to trying to like trying to like boost like scalp a switch and meanwhile like oh we got it we we opened up we found some more and then people be like i'm just gonna go to i'm just gonna go to best buy and have it sent to my house thank you bye um speaking of which um i have hand sanitizer i'm selling for 20 dollars a bottle if you guys would like some mm-hmm. no 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 takers oh okay right. no nah. figured i'd try um no but yeah my hands it's one of those things that i feel is like it's technology as Mm -mm. (sighs) but yeah so (sighs) june direct not happening hopefully we hear something from them soon i hope so um just just drop all the trailers if you if you got trail if you instead of doing the direct 
just like whatever like reveals you had just like drop the trailers out just be like hey guys we're gonna drop like a tweet do like a couple of tweets hey we're gonna drop a whole bunch of trailers including a thing or we're gonna drop a trailer for a new whatever you know go check these trailers out today and then just watch people on twitter and then just watch people like you know respond to it i don't think that they couldn't have like like you know edited something they could have still put a direct together just without bowser in it and right. what's the guy's name? what's the what's the architect switch architect guy i keep forgetting his name yeah i can't think either. yeah him yeah him just be like a voice just be like a voiceover guy and a edit i mean they about- did that direct mini with john vignaki yeah they could do that that was actually pretty nice it was great hearing john vignaki not drunk um yeah those giant bomb streams with him it's the yeah, worst I'm like, yeah i'm gonna look that guy up I'm- it, he's an inch that, that guy is an interesting guy and i've only seen him drunk uh so yeah it, it was weird hearing him you know being professional and talk about video games sober but yeah it's, we're, we're in different times now yes, yes last bit of news coming from ubisoft assassin's creed valhalla was announced yesterday but was officially debuted today uh with the world premiere trailer they had yesterday they had a uh dude in photoshop paint a scene with the main character i guess but um yeah the new f- over 4 minute trailer has been um has was had dropped today showing off the new character talking about the story you know i You know what? I'm I'm still waiting on, you know, just Assassin's Creed, like Japan or something. I feel, I feel like I just need to, um, say, are we, are we going to watch this trailer? I mean, I'm just putting it on in the background. So, um, yeah, just kind of see, you know, Vikings being Vikings while you've got the British planning to teach these savages a lesson, I guess. I mm, mm, hold oof, hold on. Oh my god, hold on. Okay, so now we got um so trying to narrate this for the audio listeners here. Now we got the Vikings are in their boat. Preparing, it's just, it's just, I guess, preparing for war. It's like they're, they're, they're on land now, ready to go. Volley of fire arrows coming down. You know, things about to burn up, get real hot. Mm-hmm. People getting shot in the neck. Man, you know that's bad when you get hit with a hot arrow to the neck. A lot of stabbing and chopping off of heads and and, and things and. Yeah. Oh man, my man. Slicing and dicing. And of course, it's kind of showing off the two different things. You got, you know, the leaders who are going into battle with their men, with, you know, lead with, with the other team. The leader just kind of like just watching from afar, like, nah, I ain't getting dirty. Y'all crazy. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody yeeted a uh, uh, axe. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I, so. I, um, Denny says it's interesting that God of War drops and this goes into development. I mean, also look at um, what's it? Um, Hellblade. Like this doesn't even remind me of God of War. This reminds me of Hellblade. And then kind of, I uh, see For Honor was mentioned. Yeah, like it reminds me of like Hellblade and For Honor, but mostly Hellblade. Like all I could think of was Hellblade. Like, I'm just waiting for them to tell you, you got to put on headphones. You can just hear all the voices in your head. Just hear all all the assassins in your head. Stab him, stab him, stab him, stab him. Oh, I have. 
Lord. Um, hold on. I'm just gonna finish watching the rest of this trailer. Cause you have this up here. So we might as well enjoy this experience. Trial by combat! Oh man. But if anybody is the, over here thinking, this is a lot like Senua's sacrifice, there's a reason for this. hidden blade come out mm-hmm like, yeah it went it went a while without really kind of leaning into the assassin's creed bit even if you look at the, the the cover art for this um for the game there's nothing that screams assassin's creed about this viking outside of the little wrist blade that you could barely see also this is another game that's being advertised as Xbox Series X. Um, also, the, it has been confirmed okay. that it, it that this game is um, available with smart delivery. So you buy it once and you either get the Xbox Series X version or the Xbox One version, depending on the console you're downloading it to. So, so can I just ask a question about yes. this game? Can I ask like several questions? Please. About this game. I have a list. I have a queue. We might have an A, maybe. Do what? Is it you? You said you have a queue. I thought we we might have an A and answer. I don't. Oh, uh, so I hope someone does. So here's what we got going on here. First thing, you know, with everything going on everywhere, do we really need to have the stereotypical blonde-haired, blue-eyed people from the frozen north descending to bring destruction to everyone? Like, did we need that to be the adventure that we wanted to go on? Also, don't we have, like, enough everything about Vikings? Didn't we have, like, what, damn near eight to ten years of, like, Thor movies? and everything else like not to, mention, not to mention a show called viking y'all just didn't have like where was there just nothing else to do with 2020 that y'all went i know vikings we are so keen on vikings there is an anime there's a japanese anime about vikings called vinland saga i mean i've seen i've seen bits and pieces of it it's pretty lit but that's what's, that's just the level of Viking we have the level of Viking that we have. Oh, we're being raided. Hey. Hey. Oh, it's infamous like ah uh, gang gang. I tried Raleigh. I tried North Carolina in the building. Um, <laughs> so for characters that I remember from Assassin's Creed, the first one that comes to mind is Altair. Although Ezio is also a very memorable character. I was right. here for the stories where they were just like, let's talk about these cultures that don't get explored very often. Let's try to do that respectfully. Yes, let's talk about the Middle Eastern people. I'm here for all of this. But then it was kind of like... <sighs> so, so for me, my top ones are Adewale and... Um, geez, and it I think it's Aveline. The two black characters. Yeah, Adewale. Yeah. Oh man, I love I love like it, it's sad that like yeah, Freedom Cry Free, Freedom Cry was like a side story, but yeah. it felt great to go to Haiti and start freeing a whole bunch of slaves. It just like really just kind of take out four or mm. five hundred years of aggression on people. Mm. Let's walk up said, My people shall be free. Stab me in the eye. All right, you guys are free. Let's go. We good to go. We just walk out down. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. It doesn't seem like I mean, if you listen to the tra- so I'm not sure if you actually heard the audio from the trailer if you watched it earlier, but in that trailer, it was the British. It was like that British king or whoever that the 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 royal guy that was in the trailer. He was kind of describing the Vikings as just savages. But the trailer was kind of showing the opposite of everything he was saying. Right. So, like, he was saying, like, oh, they just go rape and pillage. It was like, no. Like, in that scene, you see the Viking, like, 
he like he was about to attack, but he's like, oh no, it's a it's a woman and children. Let me not attack and then stop my um, com- my my, com- my comrade here from also doing that because we are yeah. not these people that they mm-hmm. paint us to be. Um, like they were showing them like being fathers, um, wives, brothers, sisters. Like they had that community. So yeah, like sure, I think somebody did mention like, oh, we're romanticizing Vikings. But who, like, I mean, who I mean, are we to can, say? Can I just? But like, my my thing is that I don't want to defend it. But who are we to say? Like, yeah, like maybe that maybe Vikings weren't the people that people were writing about. I don't know. Vikings were just like a race of people. They were just I, they were a they group were warriors. Of like you you hear warriors. about the ruthlessness of a Viking, but hey, they weren't just killing machines all the time. But again, I don't know. Right. I'm not a historian. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Also, don't want to say like they're they they were they're good people on both sides. I don't want to be that guy either. No, no I guess I it's one of those it. things where, for me, and maybe this is an extension of the way that I feel about um, other game genres and tabletop games in particular, and the stories that come from the stories that we write, um, because that's my thing. Right, but like. Y'all, we have told so many stories for hundreds and hundreds of years about these really particular, not even all of European culture, just uh-huh. very particular ones. Like, we have done Vikings to death. We have done England and Britain into the ground. Like, like I think, how many stories are there on, like, Italy? It is just kind of like, y'all could have picked anything else anything else that would have been even more interesting. I saw someone um, get on and say, I would love to see an Assassin's Creed game that had a respectful treatment of Mesoamerican and Aztec culture. And I'm like, Mm. yes, please do that. If you could find someone to handle that correctly, that would be at least interesting to do because it doesn't come up very often. And what we, what I, what I don't want is for us to spend the next 20 years telling the same stories that we told for the last 20 years. I mean, I know some self works and you want to make your paper and all this other stuff, but as a gamer, I would just like not to be bored. Right. Right. You're right. And it's not like the stories aren't out there or that interesting stories aren't out there. It's just kind of a, we have the choice of taking people in a direction that they don't normally go and making it enjoyable or we do we don't you know make the risk or whatever but we get the money quote unquote and it's like at some point you have to push the medium forward or at least i hope someone would want to that makes sense (sighs) well if there's any good news in any of this is that we have yet another xbox series x game confirmed with more to come next week which coincidentally the inside xbox announcement did happen right after the assassin's creed announcement so it seemed like that was appropriately timed good timing y'all yeah but yeah so um that's all the news we got um, again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. Of course, Denny, I'm not sure if you heard, um, but we are hoping that you'll have us next Thursday at 11 o'clock a.m. Oh, okay. Is that is that the word in town right now? Well, I'm I'm hey, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Just put it out there. Okay. Look, it, it, it can't happen if you don't ask for it. That's true. Um. So yeah, trying to cover this inside Xbox so that we, you know, we can definitely um, save the space, um, clear the space out for Gong Julie, who actually will be streaming at 11 p.m. Um, I think it's 11. No, it's 10. It's 10 p.m. Um, next Thursday night. So, you know, we can cover as much of the Xbox and then kind of make sure we have enough time to cover whatever we want to cover. And not step on Gong Julie um, Thursday night. And speaking of Thursday night, we are raising funds. And I'm, 
I'm terribly sorry that I did not mention this, but we are definitely uh, raising funds for St. Jude's um, Children's Research Hospital. Um, it is the Play Live event. Of course, you probably saw the bar up top all night. It will be on, hopefully, if everybody does it right. I almost forgot. Because, boy, today has just been a day. Um, it should be on the top of everybody's stream or somewhere on the stream. We are raising funds this year for Play Live St. Jude's. Children's Research Hospital, please do the thing, do the right thing. If you have, I know times right now are extremely tough. Yes. But if you do have a couple of bucks, please toss it their way. We may have it tough, but these children, these families, they definitely have it a lot worse, especially when, you know, people are losing jobs, they're losing health insurance, and these kids need this they, they need their treatment um their kids who you know again for no fault of their own may end up ha- may have to end up in a hospital and again like just even now like parents may be more afraid now than ever to send their children to the hospital uh for fear of catching a virus or just because they can't afford it they can't even afford to go to a hospital so please, if you can, Danny, put the link in the chat. I'm pretty sure there's a link, a button down in the panels. Oh, Danny already on that because you know how he rolls. Of course. He, he already on that. Already on it. Um, so definitely, please, if you can, please help out. We really, really appreciate it. Um, and also, just show up and just like cheer people on while they're streaming out here because we're going to be out here doing it and you know something. Um being able to have people out here encouraging you and keeping things on and popping is always a wonderful thing oh, during yeah. these things. And you have all of me to do that, so exactly. please be here. Yes. Well, all right. If that's it for this evening, we really do appreciate you guys coming out, watching the stream, talking with us, because, of course, we love talking about that tech, and we love to share this all with you. Thank you so much. Um, Sin, Kev, thank you so much for joining again. Sorry, again, sorry for being late. Um, yeah, thank things you, were happening. Having the things were having, things were happening today. Thanks, Telia, for stalling oh, um, for as long you as you did. The good people of the internet that we have a forums.thecookout.org. Yes, yes, thank you. They need to go and visit because this man done put it all together. Y'all need to go visit. Ooh. All right. Right. Um, also stay tuned. I know the, cause we are coming up on May. This is the last day in April. May is right around the corner. It's in a couple of hours. Um, yeah. the cookout anniversary is coming up. Yes. Things oh, are snap. happening. Yes. A site relaunch is happening. Yes. A store launch is happening. Yes. We, we doing big things and we would definitely love if you guys would come out and support. I think the site launch is the, it's either the 13th or the 15th. I can't remember exactly. I know it's in a calendar somewhere. I was put on it. I need to go look it up again. Uh, so definitely stay tuned. We are definitely doing some dope things this month with um, St. Jude's, the cookout, everything. It's looking glorious. Chef's kiss. That being said, this has been Tech Talk Thursdays. And I guess, according to Telia, I have to call this episode four. Yeah. And not the date. No more dates. It's episode four now. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss this host over, or toss the raid over to Story Mode Bay. Locking it in the chamber. Doing big things for the community. But yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. Of course, you guys could have been anywhere in the world watching any stream the world. Could have been reading new yourself, but shows to be here with us. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh Bye. wait. Who we who we visiting? Story mode, but it may have already wet. Or did it? No. Yeah. No, not yet. Yep, so we're gonna go story mode. Wait. So yeah. See you guys soon. Bye.